Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the round 14 edition of the Football Town Show. And Joaquin Jimenez has transferred to Ashburton in the first game against George Panagiotidis' FC Carlton. Both teams will fancy their chances for a win in that game. Then we have Hassan Topal, who's taken over management at FC Essendon over Alex Kobo. They'll be looking to get their new campaign off to a flying start over Fitzroy FC. Then Lorenzo de Paris, who's moved to Pascal Vale in the transfer window, will go up against Alex Kobo who, as we mentioned before, has left his old side and he's taken along with him star defender Gustavo Candelo to Metropolitan. Amin Kedad has got Hume fit and firing and they'll look to keep it that way as they go up against Felipe Tadashi in Brunswick. And in the last clash of the night, we see Lachlan Campbell look to get Mikulam FC over the line over Andrew LePage's Moreland FC. And this really is a massive clash as a loser will surely be relegated. Let's take a look at last week's results before we move on. Brimbank and Mickleham had a filling 8-all draw, as did Carlton and Metropolitan. Ashburton continued their winning ways over Brunswick, while there were thumping wins for Pasco Vale and Hume. The first game to kick off round 14 saw FC Carlton, who was sitting just inside the top 8, take on Ashburton FC, who were looking to hold on to their top 4 spot. And Carlton got off to a dream start. Stephen Gustis, the youngster, scoring one of the goals of the week, continuing his fine form. Next up, it was Carlton captain, Shanit Aiden, who put them 2-0 in front, and soon things were looking very rosy for the former State League side. Paul Montagna, in his third game for Carlton, continued his goal of game run as he connected with keeper Jose Garcia's beautiful throw. Garcia was at it yet again, producing a fine save from Rocker, but there was no stopping the giant Italian in his second effort with a delightful left foot volley and he gave his side a lifeline at 3-1. Chabra Rajab, who's been clearly Carlton's best player all season, set up JP Nikolakopoulos for Carlton's fourth, and they were sitting pretty, leading up to half-time. Stephen Gustis, with yet another contender of goal of the week, couldn't stop scoring. His impressive form has all the rival V-League teams on notice. Ashburton really needed to come out of the blocks firing, and their prayers were answered as Nicolas Silvestri the classy Italian scored Ashburton second to reduce the deficit, but his goal was soon cancelled out by the impressive Gustus who could not be stopped. Poor disposal from Con Macris in goals gave Gustus the opportunity to chip the Ashburton keeper. Moe Mata, who had spent a lot of this season on the pine, earned some more playing time on the pitch with that crucial strike. Late in the game, Matteo Rocca had the opportunity to reduce the deficit for Ashburton, but missed on two occasions. And when the strike was handed over to Silvestri, Jose Garcia made a third save, but it was a case of third time lucky for Ashburton as Mickey Giotta scored from inside the D. It was too little too late though for Ashburton as Paul Montagna scored his second into an open goal to cap off the 7-4 result. Uh, I think uh, all the boys put in pretty well and uh, we did everything that we've trained and yeah, they were a pretty good team. We, we didn't beat them last time, but you know, we did pretty good this time. Uh, next game on the card was going to be an interesting one as FC Essendon's former manager Alex Cooper handed in the team so a new management was in for today's game and they were up for a mighty challenge as they took on the young and ever improving Fitzroy FC. Joe Monsignoni, one of the young stars of this side, getting Fitzroy off to a great start. This new Essendon side also had to deal with one of the finest players Australia's ever seen. Fernando de Moraes, and he scored Fitzroy second in a matter of minutes. As the game wore on, Fitzroy's confidence grew. Ilhan El Tuntash setting up Matty Spiros in one of his first games in the V-League. The youngster certainly made manager Todd Miles stand up and take notice. After more than 10 minutes without a genuine shot on goal, Hassan Topal, the big defender for Essendon, finally got Essendon's campaign up and running. But their hope of sticking close to Fitzroy didn't last long as Ilhan El Tuntash's blistering pace was too much for the Reds up that right sideline. But it just got better and better and better for Fitzroy. Fernando de Moraes, Joe and Ben Monteleone combining for one of the finest team goals you will see on a futsal court. Leading 5-1 at half time, the confidence kept growing for Fitzroy as El Tuntash scored a screamer for his second goal. But Essendon hit back straight away as Jimmy Suarez let the youngsters know they weren't going to have everything their own way. Maybe Essendon hadn't worked out de Moraes yet, but he was certainly doing exactly what he wanted scoring goals and setting up goals. Angelo Fusca getting on the score sheet. Di Marais also claiming his second. Scotty Rogan, who's the smallest man on the pitch, was the next to get on the score sheet. The one-time Pascoe Vale player scored three goals in his debut and he wasn't letting down his new teammates now. 
As the game wore on, Essendon's defence grew wearier and wearier. Ilhan Al Tuntash scoring his third of the game, making the scores 10 2. A rare defensive lapse by Joe Monteleone at the back was intercepted by Hassan Topal for Essendon's third. Fitzroy were out to break records to score as many goals as they could in a game, and they were certainly on their way. Helped by Al Tuntas's fourth and Ben Monteleone's second, it certainly was a day out to remember with a 12 3 win. You know, from the start, you were never in trouble in that game. You was just a free flowing, you were sitting up from the back, the boys were working hard, you were knocking it around. Geez, you've made a big difference to the team, and I think it's a new lease of life. You feel very happy at Fitzroy. I feel good. I feel good playing with the, you know, good bunch of players, good bunch of boys. They're all young, they're all fresh, they all want to learn, they all want to be there, they want to be out there playing every week. So, what else can I ask? You know what I mean? It's a good team. I'm just happy that uh, they they've been proving every week. So, let's see. We still more a couple more players to come, and I think it'll be it'll be good. an absolute ripper of a goal. Mascaris knew nothing about that. Hi, I'm Dana. You're watching the Football Town Show. Go Futsal! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to round 14, match of the round between Metropolitan FC and Pasco Val FC. Both sides sitting level on point the top of the table and will be looking to stay in the hunt for the V-League Premiership. Let's take a look at the lineups here. Paul Vidic has a star-studded lineup put together during the mid-season transfer window, bringing in to Paris, Poole and Novak. While Ali Rezepic has also been busy with the additions of Kobo, Pandolo and Michael Charman to take you down to the action. Here you are ladies and gentlemen, first versus second in the V-League Premiership. Metro have been slipping in recent weeks, suffered a defeat to Brunswick and a draw to Carlton. While Pascal have also struggled suffering defeats to Hume and Brimbank as Grigic forces a save out of the Paris early. Tomo Grigic will be a danger man tonight. Stavanovic looking up at the camera, not happy about something. And now Stavanovic looks for the corner, the Paris saves and it falls to Tomo Grigic. And Tomislav Grigic puts it away. Lorenzo de Paris made the initial save, deflected to Grigic, and he put it under all of them. 1-0 to Metro. Well, it shocked the crowd. The Pascaval strong crowd, we should say, now as Lucas Krull. Oh, it's gone through Michael Charmy. And that's unfortunate. Lucas Krull on the half volley, just slipping it under Michael Charmy. Plenty of bodies in the way. And we're back on level terms. Well, Metropolitan's lead didn't last very long. Pascal Vale always going to hit back hard. Now Stavanovic. Alia Karic. Now Rizepovic. He plays it through. Karic Stavanovic. So often scores on the near post, but the Paris will be very hard to beat there today. Charmier will bring it back into play. Grigic. Now, oh, Caro winning the ball. Sofian Sufi perhaps waited a little too long there, and oh, Grigic just deflecting it over. If Sufi played it earlier, perhaps Caro would have gone in. Almost an own goal in the end, though. Novak now on the field. Here's Caro. Pascal with all the ball. Metropolitan sitting deep. And now they press higher, and Grigic has won it back. And now Ali Rudzepovic. Brilliant double save there by De Paris. And now Rudzepovic. And Pallani cleared it off the line, too. Pascaval losing out at the back. And if not for De Paris and Pallardi, they would be 2 1 down. Here's Alex Kobo on his Metropolitan debut. He'll step up for this free kick. Kobo sliding it into Radzebovic, and he squeezes it on the near post. And he looks hungry for a win tonight, Ali Radzebovic. Metropolitan leading 2 1. He's left wide open. You cannot leave Ali Radzebovic with that much space in the D. To Paris going nuts. 
And Metropolitan now leading 2-1, really taking it up to this star-studded Pascoval lineup as Samoa has a ping from range. And now Pascoval can set up for another corner as eventually Steed drilling it in. Sufi squeezing it under Charmy. That's poor defending by Metropolitan. How can you afford Sofian Sufi to take a touch in the D? He loses carriage and not much Charmy could do from there. 2-2. Now Pascoval back in the game. Metropolitan letting two sloppy goals in. Working so hard for theirs. And now Samoas. Sufi thinking it through. Cruel! Oh, and that's uncharacteristic by Lucas Cruel putting it over from just meters out. A let off for Metro. Metropolitan's defenders just not tight enough at the moment. Letting Pascoval do whatever they want in and around their D. Estevanovic, another touch, went for the near post. The Paris making another good save. Great ball from Grigic. Now Krul. Sufi. He beats Karic again. And now Sofian Sufi. Lucas Krul. Saved again by Chami. He's really starting to fire up in this game. Krul almost. Now Samoas, Simsek, Krul, cut out by Rodzevich. Now Tomislav Grigic. That's cut out as well that time by Samoas. Krul drilling it across, Sufi. And that's a poor effort by Sofian Sufi standard. Try to dink it over Charmy, but it will be nothing more than a goalie's ball. Here's Charmy now, going long. Just three minutes left in this first half. Ali Rodzevic. Squeezing it through Grigic, and now it's going to be Ali Rudzepovic. And to Paris. Had to work hard for that save. And now Stavanovic across, and Ali Rudzepovic. He gets his second. It's 3 2. And again, he loses Samoas inside the D. Clinical as he is, just squeezing in front of him. And off the opposite post and in. 3 2 to Metro. Late in the half, Pascoval trying to get a late equaliser. And Krul has plenty of time here, but Charmy denies him. Lucas Krul did very well to lose Grigic. And well, Charmy coming to the rescue again. As we're late in the half now, Charmy will just go long. Stevanovic looking to turn, and he's completely out of time. It'll go into the break. Metropolitan leading 3-2. Now back for the second half, ladies and gentlemen. Metropolitan still with a slender one goal advantage. As Candelo goes right over the top and Stamanovic brought it down well. The execution not so great and Cruel coming across. To Paris. Cruel to Cruel and now Novak. Pascoval looked to pressure him higher. Caro. Novak. Andre Caro yet again and now it's Lucas Cruel. He puts it through to Sufi, who will create something now for Novak. And Charmy, with the one-handed reaction save, Sufi drew two of them away. And Novak failing to beat Metropolitan shot stopper. And now Okaro, looking for an option as he dinks it over. Straight back into Charmy's arms. And he looks for the long ball to Ali Rudzepovic, who looks very determined to take three points away from this and not blow their title chance. And now Sufi, straight at Charmy, but very well struck. Definitely needed some saving. And now Kobo to bring it back in. Cruel clears it. And now Kara, and they'll bring it away again. Sufi, Lucas Cruel. Now Andre Caro. And Caro back to Lucas Cruel. Cruel, Kobo standing him up. And Caro will have a whack. And it's Charmy again. Andre Caro putting plenty of power behind that one. And Charmy just getting a foot to it. Again, now the long throw. Metropolitan views out to good effect tonight. Cool. Tried to beat Grigic, he couldn't. Kobo. Now it's Ali Rizepovic and Tomo Grigic. He squeezes it in from the tightest of angles. And look at Metropolitan, how much it means to them. Another counter attack. 4-1 back by Grigic, and he finished it off. Brilliant play from Metropolitan. 4-2 now they lead. And with only seven minutes remaining now, Du Pascaval have what it takes 
to get back into this game. We know the Paris can play the flying keeper very, very well. But will it be enough to drag Pascal back into this one? As Simsek has plenty of time. And, well, Ernie Simsek probably should have done better there. Poor touch. And that just took it away from him. Now Pilati. With Zebovic again as they look to counter. To Paris was out of his goal. Caro winning it back. And Alia. Defended it again as now De Paris will fling it wide for Sufi. And now Sofian Sufi will wind up on his left foot again. And he's looking ever more threatening as he's just come on off the bench. Just wide of that far post. Now, Pascal have implemented it. They have only four minutes to squeeze back two goals as Caro wound it up. And they pressure him very quickly. Stevanovic, they just can't get a shot away. And Pascal look like they're going to survive this one. Cruel. Off the ground, Sufi wide, Caro, Lucas Krull, touch back, Caro winding it up, and oh, somehow it's squeezed through Charmy. Andre Caro with a shot that bobbled along the ground, just given too much room here. With Caro taking a touch, Devanovic should be closing him down. It's 4 3, and Pascaval in with a real sniff now. Caro to Paris, they continue to press, just 3 minutes 40 remaining. And Pascoval just moving the ball around, still very calm. They try to create an opportunity here as De Paris finds a little bit of space. And Lorenzo De Paris has equalised. He comes to the rescue once again. Afforded too much space, which the flying keeper does provide. Two goals in under a minute, and they're back on level terms. As a dying seconds now, Metropolitan scrambling to hang on for just a point now. Sufi drilling it through Pilati. Blocked by Zebovic and Pilati again. It's flown over. And it will finish 4 all Metropolitan. Perhaps hard done by, but Pascovale overall were the better side. And 4 all is the final result. What a game we've witnessed, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with the Little Emperor, Alia Rezepovic. What a great game today by the boys. Is that the best game you've ever been involved in at Futsal Oz? Uh, it was a very good game. Both teams played good and I think the draw was fair at the, at the end. You must be proud of the whole team today, considering you're missing the likes of Yusuf Avdic, Adam Husseini, yes. Dino Redzepovic. Yes. You must be proud of all the boys today. Alexander Stavanovic ran his heart out. I've never seen Alexander Stavanovic run so much in his life. We are missing a better place. But the, play, the players that played tonight did great. Michael Charmy was superb earlier. Michael Charmy was on his second game and he, he was magnificent. Lajowski! Matthew Lajowski! What a cracker of a goal. Reads the play, keeps the ball in down the line, cuts inside, beats the player. Simsek, oh, okay, with a big save. Game over. Dahani, lovely finish. Sam Dahani cracks one back for more. Great save by Lorenzo de Paris again. That's a fine bit of play. Hi, I'm Alicia. You're watching the Football Town Show. Go Futsal! <laughs> Welcome back to the Round 14 Football Town Show, ladies and gents, where we wrap up the final clashes of the night. In the next game on the card, we'll see a Brunswick who were just clinging to their place in the top eight take on Hume FC, who knew that if they got the three points, they would go to the top of the ladder for the first time this season. And they got off to the start they were after. Neshjet Sahin with a thumping three kick, which went past the wall. Daniel Slovic checked the young start, set up Cameron Holmes for a rare goal this season. The striker has been out of form. It was good to see the big man getting on the score sheet yet again. It soon went from bad to worse for Brunswick as Ruse Brosnan pounced on a loose ball and put Brunswick into a shock 2-1 lead. As expected, Hume were on the attack straight away. George Harrison with his deadly left foot almost got the better of Chen Bysa, but the keeper was on his guard. If Hume were going to be any chance, they had to respond quickly at the start of the second half and their prayers were answered through Jordan Michaelis, who's really impressed in his first few games for Hume. He had a brilliant individual effort scored 
and Sachin Sisek wanted to follow suit. But he set up Matty Vydrovsky, who slotted into an open net, which was possibly the most important goal of the game as they shot into the lead and to the top of the V-League ladder. Brunswick did their best to try and get back into the game. Ruth Rosen's strike famously denied by keeper Joe Baker. Shane Rashidi earns a one-on-one -on -one chance with Chen Baisa, but the former Pasco Vale stopper stood strong. But there was no stopping Armada Zarm strike from the sideline, which capped off the 4-1 result. Amika Dadio manages, what a wonderful job he's done. He really punches up every week, he keeps us on the ball. He really, you know, he's a great manager. How good is Amika Dad managing uh, the Am is not just a manager, he's our friend, he's our brother, he's our father, he's everything, our mentor, off the field, on the field. He brings in players, takes out players, pulls you aside, gives you advice, you know, he's irreplaceable, mate. And that's what Hume's all about. You've seen it for the last how many seasons? We bring in a player and they don't want to leave, you know? So that's what we're all about. We're about unity, family, you know? And it's more than just soccer for us, you know? And hopefully when we're old and we're still playing, hopefully we're still together. So that's 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 what I can see. The next game on the card saw Moreland FC desperate to get out of the bottom four, go up against Mickleham FC, who are sitting just below the Blues. So this game had a lot riding on it as the loser would surely drop closer and closer to relegation. And it was key target man, Lockie Campbell, who scored from almost the first kickoff through the keeper's legs. Sonny Cole had a great run from defense and set up Andrew LePage, who scored off the top of his knee. But it doesn't matter how the ball goes in, as long as it crosses that line, LePage was certainly providing a dangerous avenue to goal for the Blues hitting the crossbar. Stephen Coles fan was certainly beaten, but he was on his guard to stop LePage from close range. The Moreland playmaker was absolutely on fire. Ducking and driving his way around the Moreland defence, Iggy Filipovic's strike was denied by Emre Arpal, but there was no stopping the ever-improving Lockie Campbell, who got his second for the half and put Mickleham deservedly in front. Down 2-1 at the break. Moreland really needed to solidify their defence, but it certainly wasn't working out that way. As first game up, Michael Putson signalled his arrival with the opening goal, and then minutes later doubled his efforts with a fine display of finishing up front. The lead now at 4-1. Moreland really needed to pull a trick out of the bag, and they've certainly got one of the goals of the week, as Tuhan Sumble scored an absolute belter as the stand-in keeper for the injured Emre Okal. He was doing it all, scoring massive goals and pulling off massive saves, but there was no stopping Michael Putson, who scored a cheeky back healer from inside the D, caught everyone by surprise. With time running out and three goals down, Moreland really needed to pick their socks up, and captain Sona Cool did just that, scoring two goals in a matter of minutes, linking up with Andrew LePage, who was sticking up his hand, the man of the match. Sona Cool really having an impact that a captain should have when his team are struggling. And then Cool returned suit, setting up Andrew LePage for the equaliser. It was soon five goals apiece. But the fairy tale comeback soon turned into a nightmare as Tuhan Sumble conceded a penalty. Michael Putson made no mistake winning the game for yeah, It was a good win, good win by the boys. Um, like I said, we were very under man. Had uh, Michael Putson come in, an old friend of ours that uh, used to play soccer with us uh, back in the day. And uh, What a great inclusion you've done there, Phil. You're the manager and you bring in four goals. Four goals, Where mate. Where has he been goals. all this time, Phil? We've been trying to get him, but uh, unfortunately he's uh, got other commitments. But uh, no, I was happy to have him down today. And, it was a good team performance, all the boys did well and uh, hopefully we can string a few more of them uh, along the track. So, Well there it is ladies and gentlemen, round 14 is all over, we've had shocks and upsets and ups and downs, let's take a look at the results now. FC Carlton had a fabulous win over a hapless Ash Burden, Essendon and Fitzroy had a thrilling 5-all draw as did Metropolitan and Pasco Vale, what a match of the round that was. And have you ever seen a more exciting finish to Mickleham and Moreland decided by a penalty at the last minute? Taking a look at the ladder now, we do have a new leader at round 14. It is Hume outright over Pasco Vale and Metropolitan. It's only by a solitary point, but they're on top nonetheless. The CF Brunswick have been replaced in the top eight by FC Carlton, while Mickleham jump over Moreland with their 6-5 win. Let's take a look at the top goal scorers now, and Adam Alasevich still leads the way, the Brimbank marksman. He's leading Tomo Grigic by four goals. Followed by Ali Redzebovic, Matty Vrodjovski and Sofian Sufi, the giant Frenchman striker from Pasqua Vale. Taking a look at next week's clashes, the ones not to miss are FC Carlton and Brimbank, which will define the top six at the end of the season. The Vic Vibes and Pasqua Vale, the El Clasico as it's known, that's one not to be missed also. Followed by Ashburton and Hume, that will surely shape the top four. Thanks for joining us ladies and gents, let's go to goal of the week.